Yo, what up? Welcome to Mobox No Problem. I'm Jose Mahrez Jr. And today we got a special guest. We got a standout amateur boxer from Los Angeles, California, Stephen Navarro. How's it going, Stephen? How you doing, boss man? Um, I'm feeling good. And, you know, I'm just excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, thank you so much for making the time. First question we got for you. It's uh, probably the easiest one of the day. You get probably get asked this all the time. And it's uh, what time, what age did you get started boxing and what got you into boxing? Well, uh, boxing, I started boxing at age, I want to say 10 and a half, maybe 11. Um, I've always been around the boxing community because I come from a boxing family. Um, it's something that I always wanted to do at a young age. However, um, it was something that I had to prove to my family that I could do. But um, yeah, I started at age, I want to say 10 and a half, maybe 11, yes, sir. Young. Yes, sir. And, and then what's the name of the gym you train out of and what's the atmosphere in the gym? As of right now, um, we're training at a gym. It's an amazing gym. It's a private facility. It's called Jackson's Boxing Gym. Um, there's only two people who train there. It's uh, myself and um, a young girl named uh, Jackson Jackson Bose. Uh, my father is our trainer. Um, it's an amazing atmosphere. It's nothing but business there. You know, um, there's no distractions. Just us. We get in there. We get our work done, and we get out. You know, uh, we train three times a day, and yeah, it's amazing. Nice. So. That's awesome. And speaking of your father, you know, you, you mentioned he is your coach. How is that dynamic? You know, you guys able to kind of have the the family and boxing life, or just kind of just all blends in together. You know, uh, it's it's a blessing, uh, and sometimes it could be somewhat of a curse. Uh, you know, because um, he's on he's on me twenty four seven, but it's only for my uh, for the best interest. You know, um, he's constantly pushing me, um, and I need that. I need that. Um, you know, he's he's constantly making me a better person, a better man. Uh, and it just it just brings out the best in me, honestly. We're all we're all, all always growing, man, chopping each other up. So yes, sir. That's good. No, and you definitely want to have someone in your corner that has your best interests, you know. Yeah, especially someone that you could trust, you know. Um, but yeah. One hundred percent. And then I want to speak on your nickname. You know, how did you get the nickname Kid Dynamite? You know, um, before boxing, I did uh, Muay Thai for a couple of years, and um, I believe it was my first um, North American title shot. Um, as a Muay Thai fighter, I was 12-0, and 0, and um, I had my first Muay Thai title shot, and um, one of the announcers seen me fight, and he said I needed a nickname. And I said, well, I didn't have one, and he was trying to come up with some. And so finally, when I fought, he just ran me, called me Kid Dynamite. He said that I was very explosive, but very calm at the same time, and uh, we stuck with it. You know, a lot of people, um, they tend to give themselves nicknames, but I think it, it gives more value when people are given nicknames you know so uh, we stuck with it and i love it uh, definitely sure. means more when the people give you the nickname oh yes sir of course yeah and then can you tell us about your amateur career you know what have been some of your biggest accomplishments so far um well my amateur career well it's it's been it's been it's been a good run you know um uh, we're a 13 time national champion um two time gold internationally and a one time silver internationally um it's been amazing you know um uh, it's crazy that uh it's come to an end. Um, it's been a good run. Uh, I've had an amazing time, you know, traveling. Um, the experience of going to different uh, s- states, cities, countries, you know, meeting different people. It's an amazing environment. And um, I just, I loved it. You know, it was a great experience. Yeah, no, we did see that, unfortunately, the, you know, Olympic trials for Team USA didn't go your way. You know, you didn't get the decision. We saw your comment, you know, the the USA, I guess, judging criteria evolved or went a different direction, you know, but that's what's going to make you stronger. Can you just let, let us know how that was that experience? And then, you know, what have you learned from that Olympic trials? You know, um, what I tell people is I try to stay neutral. You know, um, I try not to get my emotions involved. Um, when you do that, you, you create too much um, pressure to yourself. So what I tend to do is I try to stay neutral. Um, I see where I'm at, what's happened. And what I have to do moving forward, um, everything's nothing but lessons, you know. At the end of the day, uh, I just got to keep moving forward. So um, although it wasn't the outcome that we would have liked um, and uh, not the outcome that we believed we should have gotten, uh, we just got to keep moving forward and make the adjustments, you know. Um, it's always something you can learn. So we go back to the drawing board and um, we keep moving forward. Like I said, you know, nothing but the best for um, whoever will be representing Team USA. Absolutely. So, and then, Stephen, how do people react when they find out you're a boxer for the first time? You know, um, 
recently, uh, some people say I give boxer energy, <laughs> which I don't, I don't, I don't tend to understand. Uh, other people, they, they, they're a bit thrown off. Uh, it's, it's kind of funny because there's different reactions that I, I get, um, because I'm, I'm pretty short, you know, I'm like five, seven, five, six and a half, five, seven, five, seven on a good day. And, um, I guess when people imagine a boxer, uh, they, they think of Mike Tyson or, or Muhammad Ali, someone that's big, mean, scary. Um, so they see me, you know, a little kid, they would think I play baseball or soccer. And, um, once they see me throwing hands, I guess it might throw them off. But, um, some people say like I have an aura of a boxer. So, um, I get different reactions, but mostly positive. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Very yeah. much respected, though. That's always one thing. People always respect because they know how much dedication you got to put into boxing. But that's 100%. something I for sure always get. It takes a lot of discipline, especially at a year level. Yes, sir. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, boxing runs in your family, and you also have a younger cousin who's also a boxer, uh, Chantel Navarro. Do you guys uh, help each other with training from time to time? Oh, yes, sir. Um, Chantel, um, I believe since I believe I was her first sparring ever. Um, Chantel and I, uh, my uncle also tends to help us, um, help me with my training camps. We tend to try to uh, sharpen each other up. You know, iron sharpens iron. Um, we're real close to each other. So, yeah, we, we tend to help each other out, uh, grow um, in any aspects possible, where, whether it's physically, mentally. We just try to help each other grow, obviously, all the time. Yes, sir. That's, that's great. I mean, they do say boxing is kind of a lonely sport, but when you have, you know, your family in it, you know, whether it's your dad's coach, your your uncle, and now your cousin, and, you know, makes yes, it less, less lonely for sure. Yeah, of course, because at the end of the day, the the, uh, the circle or the people that are around you, they need to be stable. Because um, at the end of the day, um, if not, it could just bring you down. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm blessed to have those people around me, amazing people. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then out of all the places that you visited because of boxing, which has been your favorite and why? Um, man, that's a tough question. Um, uh, while I'm Mexican, I've been to Mexico. I fought, in, um, excuse me, I fought in Guadalajara. And that was an amazing experience. Um, that was my first time going out there in Mexico, but um, I'm in a bit of a pickle. So I'm I'm not sure if I would say Mexico or or Colombia because Colombia was beautiful. It was beautiful. However, um, when we're out traveling. There's not much that we can actually do because we're there for business. Um, uh, however, I'd say Mexico just because I get to embrace my culture more. Um, and yeah, I just loved it. I love the environment, uh, my people. And um, yeah, I'd for sure say Mexico. Yes, sir. Yeah, maybe one day you can go back to Mexico and have a, oh, a pro fight yes, out sir. there. I, you know, one of, one of um, when I was a kid, I always said I was going to fight the, at the Azteca Arena. Uh -huh. uh, you know, maybe in the future. We'll see. That'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, you know, and now with the, you know, the, the Olympics kind of behind you, the, is it safe to say kind of the next chapter you're going to focus on now is the turning pro in 2024? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, um, you know, it was it was a good run. The amateur career was a good run. However, we're starting a new chapter. Um, and yes, you should uh, be expecting me to um, debut slash turn pro in 2024. So stay tuned and uh, yeah, very excited for that. That's awesome. And have any offers uh, started coming? I saw you recently with Eddie Hearn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. You know, there's, 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 uh, there's a few people who are very much uh, interested. Um, I don't want to say too much about it, but yes, yeah, very much interested. Um, I'm very excited for the future is looking bright and um, you know, we're taking it um, step by step. You know, we're not rushing nothing. Uh, we're trying to make sure that everything's, um, just laid out great, you know. We're 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 here for a marathon, not 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 a not a race, like a sprint, I'd say. So well yeah, said. we're we're very much expired, uh, excited. Well said, what said. And do you have any dream opponent in mind for the future once you turn pro? Um, I know honestly, no. Whoever they put in front of me, you know. Uh, at the end of the day, um, even in the amateurs, you never know who will be fighting. So um. I've always been taught, thanks to amateurs, to uh, just make adjustments to whoever's put in front of you, or have them make the adjustments. Cause then they um they will be fighting my fight, so um whoever they put in front of me um I'll look forward to it. Um, then they all I gotta do is train hard, and um uh, with that confidence of the hard work I put in, um yeah, whoever, yes sir. Yes, sir. And then you mentioned the Azteca. Is there another dream menu, venue you have in mind to headline? Oh, yes, sir. Um, yes. Um, so my my father he 
fought at the so I was born and raised in Inglewood, California. My father was uh he fought at the I believe at the forum a couple mm -hmm. times. That's one place I would love to fight. Um but if I could I'd love to sell out the SoFi uh arena just because mm -hmm. my father who is um I guess the past and I'm somewhat of the future. Um it's just like it's a bigger and better stadium. So um if I could I think it'd just be meaningful to fight in my hometown in such a big um arena like that. What's up? Yeah, and the Kia Forum is a good venue. I actually went to that one when they had a Thriller Verse 5. Oh, yeah? Yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah, that's I've been good. there a couple times. I've seen Trooper G fight there. Oh, uh, nice. It's an, amazing, it's an amazing spot. I mean, that's where the Lakers used to play, I believe. Oh, for real? Okay. Yes, sir. It's City of Champs. That's there the, you go. It. Yes, sir. It's, it's, it's in your city. City of yes, Champs. Uh, and then, Stephen, have you had any injuries because of boxing? And if yes, what has been the worst one? You know, um, Thankfully, no, I haven't. I haven't had any injuries thanks to boxing. Um, uh, actually, I have. I have. I'm lying. I have. Um, it was, I believe, two years ago I fought um, the same uh, tournament that I just fought in, which was to make the Team USA. Uh, I believe a week before I fought, I had fractured my finger. Mm. Uh, however, I didn't go to the doctor because I knew if I went to the doctors, they wouldn't have let me fight. So I hid it from my parents, and uh, I ended up fighting. Afterwards, I showed them what was going on, what was the problem, and they took me to the doctors, and uh, apparently my finger healed. There was a piece of bone that detached from, um, I guess, my finger bone. I don't know. Uh -huh. And uh, my muscle grew around it, so now I have a crooked finger, and um, I'm stuck with that. <laughs> oh, man. I did the tournament. You did pretty good for fighting with. Oh yeah, we won. We won. Yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah. We won that tournament. We won that tournament a couple of times. I believe five times. Um, yeah, yes, sir. So we've been, you know, we've been uh, having our face shown up a couple of times in this tournament. So, yes, right, sir. Right. Now you got an interesting story where someone's like, "We well, got a crooked finger." It's like, well, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> good yes, story. Sir. Um, and then, who's been the hardest puncher you've been in the ring with, either in sparring or in one of your fights? You know, um, that's a that's a tricky question. Um, there's some fighters who um, that's 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 a tough question. I'd say, I'd say Chocolatito. Chocolatito isn't a, a big puncher. However, in each punch, he puts a certain amount of power, and how precise he is with each punch, it's so dangerous. And there's a certain amount of speed and power to each. A uh, punch and the the amount of pressure he puts and it's not just um it's smart pressure so the uh, that is what makes him such an amazing fighter and um I I'd say him just because of that but I've sparred in a way I sparred um other world champions who they've said that are um that are big punches and I I, I didn't really feel it um however I'd say I say chocolatito for sure definitely. And then, you know, reminiscing on your amateur career, who would you say has, you know, was your toughest opponent? Um, I'd say, well, I find the uh, Pan American Games, um, I'd say my the finals in the Pan American Games, it was in, uh, in Colombia. I fought against a Cuban fighter, a very talented Cuban fighter. Um, I don't remember his name. However, he was very good. Um, very crafty like myself. Um, and it was just, uh, a chess match. And uh, an amazing fight. Um, and it was it was it's fun to watch. Just uh, looking back, and uh, I'd say that's that was one of my toughest fights because it felt like I was somewhat fighting someone or, or fighting myself. You know, looking in the mirror. So mm -hmm. I had to you know think outside the box, and um, it felt like I had to beat myself. If that made sense. Gotcha. Yeah. But, um, yeah. That that's that's that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and Cubans have a great amateur program, so not surprised the Cuban and give you a tough fight. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> And then, uh, Stephen, who was your favorite boxer growing up? Growing up, growing up, I'd say for sure, my first favorite boxer has to have been my uncle. Um, growing up, I would watch a boxer. I didn't know who this boxer was, but I would watch this boxer with my grandpa, um, and he was an Olympian. However, I didn't connect the dots because of how young I was, and mm -hmm. I wasn't. Um, like I said, I wasn't able to connect the dots, but 
later on within time, I was able to find out that it was my uncle, um, Jose Navarro. So I grew up watching him. Um, thanks to him, um, I wanted to be introduced in the sport. Um, and I also grew up watching Julio Cesar Chavez, of course. Um, Pernell Whitaker. Um, Oscar De La Hoya. I always wanted to be like Oscar De La Hoya because... I believe there was no one as big as Oscar De La Hoya. He was a superstar. Mm -hmm. There was nothing as big as him. And um, he was he was someone who came out of L.A. and uh, was able to represent uh, his American and Mexican culture, you know? Um, I say a 200% or 100% Mexican and 100% American. So uh, that's just something great to do. So uh, that's another person I grew up um, looking up to. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Um, Mano Mano Pais, because of how entertaining he was to watch. Um, yeah, and I could go on, man. But mostly old school fighters. I love old school. I love old school. Oh, great, great list of names. And now we're talking about present day. Who do you consider to be the number one pound for pound fighter today? As of today, um, I think I'd put um, Terrence Crawford or Canelo. Number one, um, I might be a little bit um biased and say Canelo, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'd say Canelo, um, just because he's been chasing greatness and I know he's gonna continue to um, I know he's gonna still try to get that fight with Bevo, which um, I know is gonna be real tough for him and, and somewhat of a challenge, but yeah, as of now, I'd say him, um, in a way. Anyway, um, I've been able to share the ring with him. He's an amazing fighter who is also, I believe, might still be able to move up in weight. Maybe a couple, yeah, move up in weight for sure. Maybe a couple more weights yeah. before retiring. So, But as of now, I'd take another Alvarez. All right, perfect. And then for this next section, Stephen, I'm going to give you some uh, matchups. These are either confirmed or rumored. And I want your opinion on who you think would win. Of course, if they're too close to call, you can always say 50-50, and you can also pass on them. Yes, sir. All right, first one I want to ask you is happening this uh, Saturday in Arizona, uh, Jesse Bam Rodriguez versus Sonny Edwards. How do you see that one playing out? I see my boy Bam Rodriguez uh, dominating this fight. You know, he's a very smart fighter. I've been able to um, experience that inside the ring with him. Um, I believe he starts off real strong, and um, I believe he takes out Sonny in the ninth round, ninth, tenth round for sure. Any great fight. Looking forward to that one. Uh, yes, and then this one is a uh, sign. It's happening in February. It's uh, the heavyweights. Uh, Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk for uh, Undisputed. That's amazing. That's an amazing fight. Um, It's, you know, I love the way Usyk fights. However, I think Tyson Fury is just too big for him. Um, I, I, I truly believe he's too big for him. I hope Usyk could um, maybe put up a better fight that I'm expecting. However, he tends to get very, very tired in the later on because there's a big weight difference. There's a, there's a weight gap. And um, to fight against those heavier fighters, it, it does make a, a big difference. So I got Fury. Uh, next one I want to ask you about is uh, Jaime Munguia versus John Ryder at end of January. That's going to be a good fight. But I, I believe Munguia should take that fight. And I believe he will. And then the last one I want to ask you about, this one is rumored. Uh, been a lot of back and forth on Twitter between these two, and it's Gervonta Tank Davis versus Devin Haney. And I want to add, it would be at 140 with no rehydration clauses. <laughs> Man, that's, that's I believe, I believe that's a, a pretty simple question. Well, there's a simple answer to it. Um, I, I got Tank, man. I think Tank's a beast. He's a I don't beast. think anybody can really mess with Tank right now. Um I think uh, Shakur could give him a good run for his money. However, I don't see nobody being Tank at the moment. I think Tank's too big. Uh, I think they uh, underestimate his IQ inside the ring. Um, and yeah, man, he's just a monster. He goes in there, he just dominates, honestly. So I got Tank. Yep, so. yep, definitely. And then coming back to you, Steven, what do you like to do outside of boxing? What are some of your interests and hobbies? You know, um, it's it's a little funny. On the weekends, I'm a vaquero. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm a little cowboy on the weekends. Um, I have a couple of friends that um own horses and uh they have um horse stalls, 
Um, so I tend to uh go out there, you know, we go ride horses, um, play with the pigs in the mud, uh, et cetera. So yeah, on the weekends I'm somewhat of a cowboy. Nice. So, and then uh, what does it mean to you to represent Los Angeles inside the boxing ring? You know, it means a lot. Uh, there's a lot of history behind it. Um, like I said, there's a lot of my people here. I like to represent that. Um, I'm a 200 percenter. I'm 100% uh, American and 100% uh, Mexican. So um, there's a lot of culture uh, that's brought up in Los Angeles. And I just like to um, expand that, you know, show the world uh, what L.A. is capable of doing. I mean, we know it. Like I said, I come from the city of champs, but um, I just like to shine the lights back on it, you know. It's amazing. Uh, there's, I believe there's a lot of honor to it. It brings more pride, yes, sir. Absolutely. And then the next question, what would be the best piece of advice you would tell someone wanting to take boxing more seriously and have an amateur career like yourself? Um, my best advice is think twice about it. And once you're done thinking twice, three, think three more times about it. Because uh, boxing isn't a seasonal sport. It's a lifestyle. And it does take a lot of uh, mind strength. Um, it takes a lot of sacrifices. And it's something that's not easy. Boxing is, is a lon lonely, lonely sport. And uh, it's only for the strong-minded. Um, however, no one could tell you what you can and can't do. So if you're willing to do it, you got to work hard. And work hard, harder every day. So if you put your mind to it, mind to it, you can do it. That's my best advice. That's great, great advice. And yeah, like you said, there's no off season in boxing. No, never, man. You're like, man. like right now, I'm, I'm right now I'm on break. But however, you know, I can I can I can be heavier than X amount of weight. I gotta continue maintaining um a healthy diet. You know, um, still working out. So th there's no off season, man. You gotta stay active in this in this sport. Yeah, I believe yeah. it. And then the final question we got for you is not really a question. It's more so now opening up the floor. Uh, what's the message you want to send to your fans and supporters? You know, uh, I just want to thank you guys all for your love and support. Um, you know, we're only going to grow uh, from here. And um, I hope to continue making you guys proud and giving you guys what you guys want. You know, um, it's nothing but love and support. And back from me to you guys. And, um, yeah, just expect nothing, from the, nothing but the best from me. And, uh, yeah, I love you guys. Well said, and thank you so much, Stephen, for your time. We're looking forward to your next move. I know you got something big coming in 2024 with a pro debut. So yes, sir. We'll keep thank our eyes you. out. Well, All man, right. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure, and uh, God bless you guys, you know? Likewise. Before you leave, Stephen, you want to drop your socials? Uh, yes, sir. You can follow me on TikTok and on Instagram at team.s.navarro. Um, yeah, that's about it. Yes, sir. Awesome. Good night. Thank you, Stephen. Enjoy the rest of your night. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. All right. Take care. Bye. Here, man.